All right, I'm gonna start at the top, just so you guys know who I am. Hopefully everybody's hearing me. And I'm gonna keep uh, an eye, make sure. So I'm Lisa Orkin. Uh, this is my Bessie house, because I changed positions. I am the creator of Project Woo, the podcast, and Love Bites. I've written and voiced thousands of radio commercials. I am the proud owner of Lisa Orkin Creative and the Radio Ranch. The Radio Ranch has been around forever and a day. And I have been writing and producing comedy dialogue commercials forever. And so I'm going to go ahead and play you a bit of one of those so you can hear what that is to uh, understand where I learned how to do this. Wow, it's so cold in the office today. Probably because you're naked. I'm naked? You're naked. I'm naked? As a jaybird. <gasps> it's okay. You're just having a stress dream about work. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You feeling kind of trapped in the wrong job? I am, that's true. I know, I know. But there's help. You hear it every day on the radio. I do? HudsonValleyHelpWanted.com Oh, right. With hundreds of local jobs to choose from. Medical, restaurant, IT, accounting, drivers, drivers retail. retail. Search by keyword and categories. You can find the perfect job for you. I can? And you can post your resume in minutes for free. Who are you? Your subconscious. You look like Mrs. Sharuba Doobie in accounting. You know, I get that a lot. So I'm not standing naked at the office? Oh, you are standing naked. What? But you're in your front yard. Oh, but I'm dreaming still. No. Huh? Say hi to the Wilsons next door. Hi! HudsonValleyHelpWanted.com Can I borrow a bathrobe? Long name, amazing results. So that is where I started. And one of the most important things I learned was in dialogue, you need short sentences. You need to write the way you speak. And every word, everything you do in your writing needs to move the story forward or reveal something about a character. Show, don't tell. So you wanna show your audience. And actually, strangely enough, podcasting and dialogue is a very, ver is a very visual field. So you wanna paint pictures for each other. Uh, so the reason we do short sentences is because it creates motion, it keeps the dialogue honest, it makes sure actors listen to each other, and interruptions actually give a sense of realism. So I'm going to move on to this next one. I'm going to grab my notes. I'm going to play this for you. Well, they're furry. Handcuffs. Yeah. Furry. Yeah. And and this is what you want. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it could be fun. Little little play BDSM oh, okay. thing. Okay. All know. right. Well, let me see your hands. Uh, okay. No talking. Okay. I think we should have code words. What? Stop or go? Well, like stop would be lion and go would be... Turtle. Right. See? So, no, no. Lisa, wait, wait a second. I, I wasn't supposed to be the one that oh, was handcuffed. Wow. I, I think I'm liking this already. Uh, this was not... I'm not really comfortable with really? this. Really? Are you feeling out of control? Lisa, I really... Ooh, I, no, code words. Um, I don't... No, wait. Am I supposed to handcuff you to something? Lisa? Huh? Code like, words. Uh, okay. This is very funny. No, nope, use your but I word. Think, well, really? Well, um, well, I, so I can do anything I want to do. I, I, I just, I think, just lay back and enjoy it, right? Lion, lion. I'm just gonna start undressing you. Oh, okay. A turtle. All right, yeah. Uh, and then uh, turtle. Yeah, a little uh, more undressing, and uh, then you know, just pull up. Yo, yes. turtle, turtle, turtle. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And then I think we're gonna watch beaches like five times. So that is showing you short sentences. So this is the exact script of what you just heard, the beginning of it. And as you notice, they're all tiny sentences. They're all tiny little short sentences that only move the story forward. Next, uh, I want you to think about writing the way you speak. We don't speak in complete sentences. We cut each other off. People are oblique. We never answer each other directly. I mean, sometimes we do, but a lot of times someone will say, hey, can you take the trash out? And somebody else will say, what's for dinner? And so I think that reveals something about us and it says something about the character, but it also moves the story forward. Uh, we take pauses. I think that's really important in podcasting, in audio fiction or drama or any kind of podcasting. When you stop, to think and you pause, the audience leans in. They wanna know what you're doing even more. 
And the other thing is improvise. I think it's really important to know that you, as people are talking and as an actor, you can totally improvise a little bit. You don't want to go completely off script, but it's okay to throw in a aha uh -huh or a hmm or a oh in between stuff. So next, I am going to play you another thing. And this is where we're talking about real conversations. I, it's important to make sure that your conversation sounds real. And when you're writing your dialogue, I want you to say it out loud, read it out loud. Does it sound real to you? Do you, is it something you would hear other people say? Um, take out the grammar, forget about grammatical stuff because it's not important in writing dialogue. So here I'm gonna play you another little piece just to give you an idea on how that goes. Lisa, sweetheart, does this bathing suit make my ass look bigger? Bigger than what? What the hell happened to my ass? It's fine. Finish the sentence. Mom. Fine for some fat ass old bubby. Did I say that? Oh, you used to have such a great ass. You remember how great my ass was? Now it's pleated. Uh-huh. You're not even listening to me. Oh, I, I'm listening. No, you're too busy obsessing about Lisa, so that that is all about real conversation that moves it forward. And even with the idea that it's real conversation, every word moves you forward. So these are some quotes I found. Drama is life with all the boring bits cut out, right? So you want to just make sure, is this, do we need this? Is it moving the story forward? Is this boring? Uh, good things when short are twice as good. Uh, I try to leave out the parts that people skip. I think these are all really good quotes on writing dialogue. Okay, next. Uh, so we're gonna go back. So, so the piece that we just heard, I wanna talk about how non sequiturs work and how you can move the story forward. So in this story, they are trying on bathing suits. We're getting an idea of who the mother is. And then we also wanna reveal some information that breast cancer has affected them both. And I wanna show you how we did that within dialogue. That is a very tiny swimsuit. Well, that's how it holds in your tummy. Here, help me get it on. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to hold onto the wall okay. and you pull it up. All right. Are you ready? All right. Pull. I'm pulling. Ah. All right. I'm pu ah. Ah. All right. Stop. Wait. Wait. Okay. Look. I'll lay down. On the floor? You stand over me facing my feet and when I raise my hips, pull. All right. All right. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Right. Now! Oh, oh, Mom! Oh, 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 Mom, when do you get your nipple? Um, the doctor said a year. Where is it? In the freezer, like a piece of wedding cake. Wait, uh, your nipple is in the freezer like a piece of wedding cake? No, the doctor's. The doctor has a special freezer for nipples? Yes. Oh, what if there's a power outage and they all go bad? In other news, forget winter, the nipples are coming. Rogue nipples. Puffy ones, silver dollar sized ones, and those frightening tiny little pink ones. So there you go. That to me says a lot about cutting people off, non sequiturs, moving the story forward, using every line as something of information about the character or the plot or uh, where we're going. Maybe it's even foreshadowing something that's coming up soon or a little later. So I think that's really important. So listening to conversations, I think it's really, it, it's harder right now, but I think if you can eavesdrop on people, just, you know, you're out and about and you just open those ears out and you're like, what, how is that conversation working between those two people? What am I learning from that? How often are they cutting each other off? How often are they changing direction of the conversation? And what actually are they talking about? Uh, the next one is, oh, okay. So I want to talk a little bit about, so what if it's a monologue? What if it's just one person talking in the beginning? Well, you still want to use short sentences, but the way to uh, actually keep the action going is to use sound effects, make it in motion, make an action going on, a physical action going on as you are writing your dialogue, as you're speaking it. So I'm going to give you a little taste of that. Please don't let me run into Jerry. Please don't let me run into Jerry. Your phone's in. Keep your head down. Open door. Check hallway. Clear. 
and walk. Just walk. Keep walking. Lisa? Lisa! Walk faster. Lisa! Yeah, it, it's Jerry! Yeah, me! Pretend I, you I, don't hear him. Just walk. Still walking. Lisa! 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 Jerry, hi! Uh, hi! So, that that is a way to, if you're doing a monologue and you need to move the story forward and you want to think about short lines, use your sound effects. Make sure there's an action going on behind it. If you're sitting in a car and you're telling something, you're not as active, right? So you want to be walking. You want to be doing something. I mean, the cool thing about podcasting is, is that you can create anywhere. You could be in space, you could be jumping out of a plane, you can be in an airplane. So sitting in a room talking, not necessary, right? You want it to keep moving. And you also wanna paint pictures. You want your audience to see where you are, to visually see where you are. So in their mind's eye, they're actually imagining it and seeing it. So your job is to paint very good pictures. I know we're using lots of examples here, but it's my best way to do it. So I'm gonna give you an example. So here's a couple talking, but they're not just sitting, they're walking around the house, they're looking through things, they're imagining stuff, right? The, you're imagining stuff, the listener. In sports, the Blue Jays hey, can I have your keys? Did you lose your keys again? No, I just left them in your car. They're on the kitchen counter. My keys? My keys. Oh, your keys, thanks. I can't believe you lost your keys again. Yeah, you know what? Your keys are not on the kitchen counter. Oh, uh, well, uh, look on the dresser. Thanks. Uh, hey, maybe your keys are in your purse. Yeah, they're not in the bedroom. Wait, wait, you had my keys last. I did? Yeah, you left your phone in the car. Oh, right. Did you lose my keys too? You know what? I think they're in my coat pocket. <sighs> I have an extra set in the junk drawer. No, you know what? You are the most patient man in the world. Did I? So that that is showing you how you can create a space. We see the house. We imagine her walking around. Dialogue is also footsteps. Dialogue is knocking on a door. Dialogue is falling off somewhere, tripping. All of that can work in your dialogue. All right, so now we're gonna to go to directing actors a little bit, sort of just running over a basics on all of this. So I think that one of the secrets I find to casting is casting someone as close to the character as you can. I know actors can be imaginative. I know actors can do all different characters. But if you're doing a podcast series with 10, 12 episodes, you want it to be consistent. And the best way to be consistent is to cast someone that's very, sounds very close or sounds just like the character you imagine. And a lot of times people will say in Hollywood, we're not very imaginative. Well, you know what, there's a time essence to it and you want to you want to make sure that you get what you need so I think it's really important to think about making sure that you cast people that really fit that character and then eventually you can see what else they can do but until then I think that I think that's a great a great way to go and you know even in commercials or in podcasting when I cast fiction I always cast people that are super sound just like the character makes it easier on everybody uh, the other thing is don't be married to your words. If the actors are having trouble with their words, I think it's really important that you, you let them sort of make it their own. So if they want to change some words around, let them change the words around. I think that is perfectly fine. And uh, one of my biggest tricks when an actor is stumbling or having a hard time is what I do is I have them speed read the script. So speed read it maybe three or four times and then either shut the computer screen off, turn around, flip the page over and improvise what it is you just were speed reading because that'll tell you if you have a good sense of what the story is and you're not just reading off a page. And I would just say, repeat that, just rinse and repeat that a bunch of times and then, and record all of it because sometimes the speed read is not as fast as you think and is actually the best take. So, you know, it doesn't cost anything to record everything. So just, do that. And another thing is too, I know a lot of actors are remote. And so you have one actor in like, let's say Kentucky and one actor in Oregon, you know, let them get on Zoom and practice with each other. Get a really good idea of how the conversation goes back and forth. Rehearse it, nothing wrong with rehearsing. It's actually really good. And then you get it in your bones and you can feel the reactions. Uh, pick up cues. 
I think it's really important for people to pick up cues and to be on top of each other because that's how we talk in real life. And the other thing is from an acting standpoint, listen, even if the actor's not in front of you, like imagine what they're saying in your head and respond to it. An actor's job is just to respond and use your people. You, if you don't, if you can't hop on a Zoom call, find somebody in your house, find your animal and just talk to them. But if you can get someone to read with you, even better. And accidents, don't stop the scene. So if you're reading and you stumble over a word, just keep going because sometimes that sounds real. It's a happy accident. Sometimes you go off in a direction or you can't quite get it together and, and you say it wrong, just, just keep going because you never know what it's gonna what it's gonna end up happening it could be something really beautiful and rich that you hadn't even thought about that would really work and have fun and play there are no rules you can make it physical you know make it very physical when i act i act with my hands yes my face needs to stay near the mic but make it physical so i have uh two more little things for you to listen to um one is they're both they're both from love bites they're both uh love bites and i'm just gonna go ahead and play that and then we'll do a question and answer hopefully you guys are still hearing me and i'm still on and i'm not doing this by myself <laughs> which would just be hilarious all right okay so yeah i i uh -huh. because i yeah i farted in front of you no you did i did <laughs> I I think that we're at the uh -huh. point in our relationship where you need to fart in front of me, and I no 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 yes, no, you know what? I'm not, I know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Look, uh, I know you fart when you grind the coffee in the morning. I can hear it somewhat, but I think we need to consciously fart in front of each other, and that just moves us to a different place, and we won't have stomach aches anymore. All right, so just I know you can. I know you can. Okay. All right. You know what? You know what? I think we've been doing this long enough. Okay. I think we've been doing this long enough, and and I think that you're right. I think you're right. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I got, you know, this isn't like, this isn't like, you know, belching on command. This is a whole other thing. So, all right. So, hold on. Uh, eh. <laughs> all right. Your turn. That was not your, so bad. No, okay. no. I, you know, I mean, I'm considering, right. you know, I, I mean, I, you know, all I right. wasn't quite all ready, right. you know. I'm just going to try and do this controlled. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> all right. One, two, three. Oh my lord. Oh. 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 Wow. Okay, no. Okay, so oh, Okay. God. So, there we go. Um we can do question and answer. I'm going to stop my screen share. Hopefully you guys heard all that. If not, well, I'll record it and you can come back. I promise. And we'll send it off to you. Uh let's see. Am I back on? Ever, can you hear you're, me? Or, yeah, you're back on and uh, it was very clear. So thank you. Okay. Oh, good. So um, questions and answers. Hopefully people stuck around. Um, let's see if I can stop. Am I still screen sharing or no? No. No. Okay, good. Um, do I open the chat? I don't see any questions and answers. Do you have any questions for me ever? Yeah, we do. Um, I'm sure Arielle does too. I think she's on as well. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can do it in the chat uh, box or in the Q&A box. Um, I know we, we got started. It was a little bit rough of a start because of the connection. But uh, uh, Lisa, being the professional that she is, uh, she powered through and, uh, uh, and and it was great. So thank you for that. I sped through thinking, oh no, we don't have time, but we did have time. So, um, yeah. yeah as, as we uh, as we let some of these come in, let me ask you this: I um, I want to be a writer. I want to write more, right? I I it's not natural to me. I mean, um, not anymore. I, I used to do when I was younger. I just it's either because I don't have time or I don't want to put the time in. But what kind of advice would you have for those that want to write more, but for whatever reason, I once I get started, I don't stop, but it's, it's hard for me to just start. I, I think for someone like you, I would just say, you need to just set aside 10 minutes a day. Just say, I'm just gonna write nothing. I'm just gonna write like off the top of my head, 10 minutes a day. Just start with 10 minutes a day of just writing nothing and say, okay, every day when I have my morning coffee or tea or cereal or whatever, I'm gonna write for 10 minutes, just that. 
And I think that will get you sort of hooked on writing. And if you did that every day, even five minutes, five to 10 minutes, you would start writing more and more and more and more. And I think that's a good way to get yourself going as a writer. Yeah. When we, I used to do this, um, it would come out more like short uh, sentences uh, connected kind of, but, but not really um, always making, you know, a, a nice little paragraph. It, it, it felt more like uh, poems, if, if that makes sense. Oh, like, yeah. Little, yeah. Little sonnets or whatever. Um, but that sure got the, the juices flowing, um, which, which I enjoyed. I think, too, you can also, you begin to, um, if you just keep writing every day and then you look back over your work after maybe a couple of weeks, you'll start to see themes that you're writing on the same theme. And then sometimes you can take those themes and make something from that. Um, Is, the, I, I, yeah, I like that. I'm assuming that there's a difference between creative writing and business writing or, or is there a different approach to it? Um, I think there's a very different approach. I think business writing is very different than creative writing. I think that uh, for business, it's, you just need to be to the point for creative writing, you need to build pictures. And I think that's, even if you're reading a book, you're visualizing what they read. So I think that creative writing is all about building pictures in people's heads. 10 minutes a day approach worked for me. Hi, Joe. Um, yeah, or just write 100 to 250 words. Yeah, I think there's a, very, there's a big difference. I'm not great at like e business emails, despise doing them. Mm -hmm. But writing creatively is really fun also because you can escape in your own head. And I always, I, I sit and talk out loud with every character. So I'm writing and I'm like, and then he said, and then she said, you know, so yeah. Very there different. was a, a glitch in, in the matrix here. So every uh, attendee is Joe test for some reason. Um, oh, oh, that's so, so funny. Yeah. So Joe, another Joe test uh, is asking, how do you deal with working with remote actors and making sure that they have the same quality of audio slash recordings? Yeah, I think that's really hard. I think um, if you need to send them a mic, I think that's really important. I think that that I would I would just send them a mic with a return package so that they are all using the same microphone. I also would use, I write things so people are outside. So that way you always have like some sort of sound effect in the mix and that helps it make it sound like everybody's in the same place. So if you have birds and cars and all kinds of stuff underneath in the mix. I think that helps that stay in the same place as well. So I think that's really important. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I work with Jonathan Fields and he actually sends microphones to people and they send them back if the, if he doesn't have a good sound from them. Uh, th this th this is one of the questions that we're asking most of the, the presenters, but uh, because of the pandemic and you know, workflow and everything that's going on, the, the craziness, it, it feels like um, creatives and freelancers are, are maybe struggling the most um, to, for consistent work. Um, how, how is that in you? And, and I mean, that truly, that's your world, um, those around you. Yeah, well, obviously I can't go out for auditions. Studios are down, so we're all recording out of our house. Um, luckily voiceover is really important right now because they're using a lot of stock footage. My daughter's in casting for on camera and that's completely gone. Um, I'm doing a lot of side work that I don't usually do. Um, but, and I, I love working with my actors in studio. So for me that I can't get everyone in the same spot is really, really difficult for me. So uh, so that's why we go on Zoom and we rehearse and we practice and we make sure that we're on the same page. So when we send our dialogue, it matches. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just record from my remote computer, put them on Zoom to read with me. We don't hear them. We just hear me. And then we'll, we'll switch it up when they do theirs. So they have someone to read against, because I think, I think it's hard. You know, it's been really hard on the creative side. It's not, um, commercials advertising is not what people want. I think podcast is a little wonky. Like at first they would, they thought the numbers were going down. I don't know what the deal is with it now, but, but I also think people are going to need more imagine. Not people, people don't want true crime right now. 
they want they want to be entertained they want to get lost in a world so like project woo Woo has been doing amazing in this time good yeah we're we're, uh we're hoping obviously everybody can pull through right uh this is crazy times for everybody uh let alone all of our creative and freelance friends yeah um yeah tell us what's uh what's coming up for you i mean i know that you're doing some some side uh, gigs that you normally wouldn't do, but uh, if, I mean, what is this going to look like for you specifically 2021? Uh, I'm doing a lot of consulting. I'm doing an amazing amount of podcast consulting um, with big companies coming in and asking me to help them get a podcast started, an inner office podcast. Um, also consulting for people who do fiction podcasts to help direct their actors and stuff like that. So right now it seems like I, uh, it's basically consulting and uh, directing actors um, and a bit of voice work that that's what it looks like until next year. So it's still shaping for me. I don't, I don't know completely how it's going to exist, but right now that's what I'm doing the most of consulting, helping people, whether it's interview podcasts or just straight business podcast shaping, uh, getting ready for a launch so that they know what they're doing. Okay, and for those that are uh, here live, obviously you were able to hear uh, this great presentation, uh, but we're also going to share it in our podcast Facebook group, the LA Podcast Festival Facebook group uh, there either later tonight or sometime tomorrow uh, to catch all the good stuff. Um, Lisa, as always, great working with you. We, we appreciate your support. We appreciate everything that you've done for the outlier. Uh, Thank community. you. True professional. You. <laughs> um, th- this is a lot of fun for us. Thank you. I, this has been great. And if anybody has questions or they want, they can email me at lisaorkin at gmail.com and just put outliers question in the subject. So I know to open it. Um, yeah. So, can you yeah. add that to the chat here? Um, yeah. I'll when you get a stuck. Yeah. I'll and then the um, chat. give us as you're doing that too, if you can type and talk, which I'm sure you can uh, give us some of your social media ch- uh, uh, channels. Uh, Instagram, I'm most, I am most active on, and that's Lisa Orkin Graham, and and that's for Insta. Um, and then um, I'm also that on TikTok, <laughs> which nice. is my new thing. And then everywhere else, I'm just Lisa Orkin. So you can find me in my um, podcast right now. Project Woo Woo is the is the one that I've been doing the most, which is all all fiction. We love it. Again, thank you for for doing what you do. Uh, we're gonna have you on our stage again in 2021, hopefully somewhere uh, around the world. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> seriously, we need the we need the people. We need the hugs. We need the just hanging out with with uh, with everybody. Yeah, uh, it's been yeah. A, what a, a couple of months, two, three months maybe now, and and I miss it. For sure. Yeah, me too. I miss it. So yeah, I agree. Okay. So, good luck. Right, and uh, right. thanks for doing what you do. We'll talk all to right. you soon. Bye ever. Bye. Guys, that was Amber. Lisa Orkin. Yes. You're here. How you doing? I'm here.